Great. Hello, everybody, and thanks again for joining um, our Zoom call tonight. Um, my name is Rocky Domingo. I'm the principal of Bishop Alamany. Um, I'd like again welcome uh, back to school. Um, Mr. Sithi, if you could show the, the agenda and then we can show what's going on. Um, Dr. Hamilton is unable to join us tonight. He had a family engagement that he is um, that he's at, but he sends our, our his best wishes um, and wishes that he could be with us. But unfortunately, because of scheduling, he won't be able to join us. But he sends his prayers as well as his best uh, for everyone. Um, the bulk of my presentation will just be question and answers uh, taken from all of you um, regarding any clarifications that you might need or um, any questions you might have about um, coming back to school. Um, and then, you know, at the very beginning, I'll talk about um, what we're doing to be able to, to ensure the success of your students um, and to remote distance learning and talk about the safety and healthy, healthy protocols that were taking place um, when we do come back. And I'll answer some questions about the likes as well, too. So if we can begin with prayer as we normally do, we can pray to ourselves in the prayer of the presence of God. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Good and gracious God, we thank you for the gift of Catholic education, uh, for the gift and the sacrifice of our parents in making that a reality at Bishop Alamany. Please bless our faculty and their families. Uh, please bless the work that we continue to do uh, for the good of your uh, kingdom. And be with us in our conversations today and always. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Um, again, just again, welcome and thank you very much for joining. Uh, just about a little personal about me. Um, I, I've uh, been blessed to be um, to have been part of Catholic education for um, over 20 years, um, and I've seen everything from pre-K to elementary school to high school uh, to college to grad school and even seminary, um, either as a student, as a as a teacher. Um, as, or as administrator and even now as a parent. Um, so I understand the Catholic school system, but I understand the benefits that it's given to not only individuals, but to families as well as communities. And so I am a firm believer in Catholic education as Dr. Hamilton, um, and we are committed uh, in making sure that the quality of Catholic quality education um, continues um, throughout Bishop Alamany, regardless of the learning environment, whether it's going to be um, remote or it's going to be hybrid or whether it's going to be in person. And so we are committed to doing that. Um, uh, just about myself, I, I have, uh, Kathleen and I have been, um, have two boys. Um, I have a senior um, in high school. Uh, he is a, uh, Joseph is a senior at LaSalle High School. Um, and then I have Owen, who is a third grader at uh, St. Elizabeth um, in Altadena. Uh, Kathleen and I brought home a souvenir from Vegas that just keeps on coming and keeps on eating. So we're very happy and very blessed to have them. Um, and I'm very blessed and very happy to be uh, the principal at, 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 uh, at Bishop Alamany. Um, and so um, going forward, and we'd like to talk a little bit about uh, the, what we're trying to do to make sure that your students will be successful um, during remote distance learning. Um, I'm sure most of you have seen the schedules that we have posted um, that are online. Um, and I just want to talk a little bit about uh, not just the schedule, but the nuts and bolts and how we can try to make sure um, that that success is reached, but also thrive, um, that your students thrive um, in, in that new different, in that new normal that we're experiencing. Uh, Mr. Sithi, if you could go to the next slide. So just to let you know that when we do begin in remote distance learning, all our classes will be synchronous, which means that um, we will keep to a schedule. Um, one of the things that we learned uh, from you and from our parents and from, from faculty um, is that the kids need structure. And part of that structure is abiding by the schedule that we proposed. So classes will start at 8.30. Um, they will be for an hour. And then all the teachers will be teaching uh, for that one hour. How that method of instruction is delivered or how that looks like is, is left simply to the teacher. I mean, that's the best part about teaching, the, the creative portion of it. But they will be there. Um, they will either deliver it through uh, pre-recorded videos, uh, through lecture, through small breakout rooms. But a teacher will be there um, for every hour and you can count on that for making that happen. Um, when we do and when we go back to in-person hybrid, um, we have outfitted our classrooms now with cameras. So it will be um, live stream. So all the classrooms will, all the classes will be live streams. So when we revert back into in-person hybrid, I hopefully very soon, um, your students will be going to school five days a week. Um, two days out of the week will be um, in class or in person. And then three days out of the week will be via Zoom. 
And then when they are at home via Zoom, um, they will be able to interact in real time with their, um, with their teachers as well as with their classmates. <clears throat> and so part of that process is um, not only a live teacher, but also incorporating Zoom or Teams um, into, the, into the teaching environment so that it'll be just as seamless as possible in terms of whether they're at home or whether they're in front of the teacher in, in, in the classroom. Um, if you notice that in our schedule for um, the remote distance, you've seen that the afternoon schedule has afternoons optional uh, tutoring times for half an hour um, after lunch. Those um, times or tutoring times are not optional uh, for students that are taking honors or AP classes. Um, we recognize then that there is a lot of material that our teachers would like need to give to our students in order for them to um, not only to have that one on one and also to be with the, with the other students, but also that material is pretty dense and we need to make sure that those minutes are covered um, and that they are um, that they have that opportunity to, to continue have that. So for those students that do not have honors or advancement or AP classes, those times are, are optional. But the teachers will be there. Um, all the teachers will be uh, for period one, will show up at their tutoring times. If one, two, three, four, all the students show up, they will be there regardless. Um, uh, but then sometimes the teachers will need that optional time as being mandatory. And if they will, if they, if they use that time, they will notify you and notify their kids um, way in advance so that they can anticipate being part of the afternoon session as well. One of the things that we've learned um, coming back and learning from remote distance learning and part of that structure is that we're requiring dress code for our students when they go to Zoom. Um, as all of us have experienced in this new normal being the, I don't know, the 69th day of April, it seems like every day seems the same. <clears throat> One of the things that we're helping our students do is change that, um, not only in terms of an environment, but also in their attitude. <clears throat> One of the things that we have in, in, in place um, that we do very well is, is a dress code with a uniform. Students come to school in a uniform and they know that this is school. Um, and this will be no different when they come back um, in a week. And that, and hopefully, not hopefully, we know that that will help not only their attitudes, but also help in their, um, hopefully their mental health and realizing that they are part of a community and that this is part of school and this is how school is running, at least for the new normal. Um, and for the, get them into the, um, uh, the mode of being in school again and not, and out of, not being in summer. Um, the events in, in Wednesday, as you can see, are, are the, uh, uh, for the uh, remote distance learning, the, the Wednesday, uh, schedule is half day at 1230. But we are intentional about making those uh, afternoon sessions um, available for building community. So in that time, we will have masses, virtual masses. Um, we will have activities sponsored by um, uh, ASB or by campus ministry or even by different clubs or even by different um, organizations throughout the school to help build and foster uh, the community that we're trying so much uh, to make sure that our kids have, but also that sense of normalcy that we want to give to our students and to our community about as much school that we can, uh, given the parameters that we're, that we, that we're facing now. Um, the next slide, Mr. Sipping. Um, when the students come back, um, the campus is going to be ready. Um, and in fact, it's going to be ready fairly soon. So when we get the, or the mandate order lifted, um, we will be able to hopefully, not hopefully, we will hand, then be able to start school the next day. So one of the things that we're doing is that we are optimizing all our classrooms to hold at least 16 students. And the desks will be clearly marked with those desks that will be, teachers will be using and students will be using. Um, and then those desks that are not being used uh, will be, will have tape, will have, uh, will be clearly marked and they're measured out to be six feet apart. Um, and then there also will be clearly marked or democratic the spaces for teaching and, and student zones as well too. Um, so for the teacher zones, um, it depends in terms of the orientation of their classrooms. It can be either 12 to 10 feet um, distance. And then all teachers will have a clear plastic or a clear barrier um, and on top of their desk so that when they do meet with students and speak with students, um, they will be able to do so in a manner that's very safe, but also um, abiding with a social, with the, with the, with their protocols that's for, uh, for social distancing and public health guidelines as well. Um, mass or temperatures will be checked in for everyone conducted coming into school. 
Um, and then we will have two areas that students will be able to check in. Um, they will be at Alumni Hall and also in, in the gym. Um, when they do check in and they have their temperature checks, they will be given an, uh, a wristband saying that they are cleared to go to school and be in class. Um, if the, the temperature check um, shows that they are high, um, then they will not be admitted into, into the campus. One of the things that we're asking then for you to do, and as you normally do in the morning, is ask how your children are or how they're feeling. Um, are they have any symptoms? You know, do they have headaches, coughs, anything like that? And then, you know, we're asking them for you to keep your student at home if, if, they, if they exhibit any of those symptoms. Um, and then um, if that's the case, then, 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 then they're at home. But if, and then we do the temperature checks, and then if they're clear to go, then, then, they're, everyone, and then they're free to go to school. Masks will be required for everyone on campus, except when they're eating or drinking, and students must bring their own mask. Um, hand sanitation stations are now being placed promptly throughout the campus um, for students to be able to use. Um, drinking fountains, again, are going to be X'd out, with the exception of the drinking fountains that um, you can provide your own water bottle, and then that was, and then you can do that, but nothing where you drink directly from the water fountain. And then we're also making sure that the outside eating areas are going to be re are reconfigured to accommodate social distancing protocols and public health guidelines as well. Um, next slide, Mr. Sithi. So the expectations then for the students in order to provide that structure um, and accountability um, to ensure then that your students will not only be successful, but also thrive in this new learning environment is that it's like everything else, it's like, uh, like regular school, um, we will be taking attendance uh, for all the students and uh, students that come in 20 minutes late after, begin, after it begins will be marked absent. Um, we still encourage the student to come to school at minute 22, minute 25, minute 30. There is a value for them to be able to participate in the lecture, in the class, to be able to have face time with their teachers, to be able to, um, uh, to be with a class with their classmates as well too. So there is a value to that. Um, but, uh, you know, in keeping with the order and the structure that we hope that you will help us foster, um, three tardies will equal an absence and 12 absence will result in a student may not receiving credit uh, for the class. So that's part of the structure that we hope then uh, that you will help us reinforce um, at home as well too. Um, as always, we're asking then for you to contact the school if your student will be absent, um, whether that's going to be remotely when we're either remote or whether we are in person or a hybrid. Um, but again, uh, not only contact the school, but if you can contact your students' teachers as well too to let them know. Um, and so you can make accommodations or you can let them know in terms of how many days a student will be absent and if they can uh, forward anything that they've missed so that they can at least make up certain things in the time that they are away. Uh, communication is key both on our part as well as on your part in letting us know how we can um, help and make sure that your students will be successful in this new environment. And in addition to then behavioral expectations, now with the new normal, we're also um, expecting students to um, abide uh, with all of the public health guidelines that we are reinforced enforcing, as well as all the social distancing protocols established by the school. So wearing masks, uh, make sure that they are six feet apart, uh, making sure that um, when we are asking them to, to not congregate, um, that they listen to us as well too. And that is for their own safety, but also for the safety of our community, but also uh, for the safety of our families because they will be coming home um, and making sure that we um, will do our best uh, to um, minimize the risk um, to the best of our abilities by making sure that we uh, keep with the public health guidelines as well as all the social distancing protocols that's been given to us through county health and through uh, all the government agencies. Uh, next slide, Mr. Sifi. Many questions about athletics. Um, athletics is a, one of a marquee uh, organizations and uh, for us um, at Bishop Alamany. And it is thoroughly, you know, really important um, for our students in a sense of uh, normalcy in terms of being back in school and part of being in school and part of that high school experience is being involved in sports. Um, the safety of our student athletes and coaches is always top priority. 
Um, the traditional format given to us by CIF will still remain. However, the seasons will be abbreviated to 72 days. Some seasons are longer and some seasons are shorter, um, but uh, because of the uh, abbreviated format by which uh, CIF is allowing us to be able to play and to continue on with athletics, um, they'll be cut down to 72 days. The 72 days includes um, um, any preseason, any, all the league games, um, any, any championship games, and, and, and everything else, playoffs included as well, too. Uh, temperature checks and screening, just like for kids coming to school, will be taken prior to each practice. Um, summertime practice, uh, summertime rules extend until December, which basically means that um, since we are not having games or any um, contests or any sporting events, um, teams can practice under the discretion of the school and under discretion of the um, athletic director. Um, practices will resume for most of the most of the, our, our teams, especially those teams that, that are participating in the fall, will resume on Tuesday um, after Labor Day on September 8th. And then we will still be in phase one of CIF, and so we will only have outdoor conditioning only. Um, kids will not be touching any balls. They'll be in pods. Um, they will still have the same um, protocols and public health guidelines that we will abide when they come back and practice on, start practicing on September 8th. Um, a lot of this information and much more information will be given um, at our athletic parent uh, Zoom call with Mr. Erbach um, on September 12th at 6 p.m on Thursday. Um, so we will have all the login informations as well as all the Zoom information posted on the um, website, but it'll also be just submitted, uh, we send out to you via email and via Blackboard normally and how you normally get that information. Um, again, next slide, Mr. Sethi. At this time, this, this is really an opportunity for all of you to be able to ask me questions, and hopefully I have answers for you. Hopefully I can clarify a lot of what's going on and, and maybe about some trepidations or questions you might have about opening the school. Um, if you could, then please type them in the chat room or chat box. Um, Mr. Sithi will read them out to us, and then we'll, I'll answer the questions um, one by one. I, again, I forgot, I wanna thank Mr. Sithi uh, for, for moderating this uh, Zoom call. Um, he's been doing all of them. Uh, he's did three so far, and then we have uh, one more to go. Um, so I'm very thankful for all his help in, in making sure this happens as smoothly as possible. Um, for any specific questions or um, inquiries about a student or about your family, um, please direct them directly to me um, and just email me. I'm happy to, to, to answer that email. Or if you'd like to schedule an appointment either by phone or in person, uh, please contact uh, Cindy or Mrs. De Santiago, and she'd be happy to make an appointment for you to, for, for us to be able to meet. So thank you very much. Mrs. Okay. Sethi, you're on. Thank you so much, uh, Principal Domingo. And thank apologies, you. everyone's going to hear my, my puppies in the background uh, barking because they're unhappy right now. Um, first, a quick announcement, reminder from our parent association, our very wonderful and amazing parent association. Uh, we have a parent association, parent association survey. Uh, there's a link where you found the link to this meeting, um, and they ask if you can kindly uh, fill out that survey. And then about the parent association, again, I want to uh, encourage all our parents to join our parent association. They will be having their monthly meetings uh, via Zoom um, the first Tuesday of every month. All the login information is, will be posted on the website. Um, and then being involved in parent association really is, is key. Uh, the collaboration that we have with all of you um, and the school with the teachers and faculty and administration um, will help ensure that we provide the best quality Catholic education for our students and for our community. It's only through that partnership, that collaboration, that that will happen. So I highly encourage you to, to join. Um, and to be part of the Parent Association. All right. Um, also, just so everyone knows, uh, this uh, PowerPoint will be available in PDF form, also where you found uh, the link to this Zoom meeting, and it's uh, being recorded and will be available um, at some point tomorrow on the school website, um, in case you miss anything. Um, so our first question, uh, will the counseling department be able to facilitate any virtual college tours or virtual field trip days for the junior class this semester? So one of the things that we were, so on October, I think September 26th, and I'll talk about that later, um, there will be counseling night with sponsored by the um, counseling department. Um, and they will talk a little about what that looks like uh, in terms of um, college visits and then also college uh, 
um, representatives coming on campus and talking to our students about uh, about uh, the the next two years uh, about them going on to college. Um, they will be available, um, and then they will be and they are working very hard. Mrs. Uh, Mrs. White um, and her team are working very hard to ensure that um, our students will be able to have that same experience of knowing about schools and colleges, um, and then a different. And I'm sure, and I know that colleges are. Are waiting to be able to, to talk to our students as well too and our families to talk about the programs that they offer as well so yes please uh we, we will keep you posted in terms of what that's going to look like great um the next question is will the classroom be sanitized after each use yes so they will be sanitized after each use um, they will also be cleaned um, at the end of each day and then every Wednesday is designated as a deep cleaning uh, on campus for all the for all the classrooms that are being used the next question is when we return to in-person schooling how will the AB cohorts be split up by grade level no the AB cohorts are split up it's, it's cardinal and gold um, colors, and those will be split up um, by, uh, by sections in terms of classrooms. Um, and so it's not alphabetical, it's, it's gonna be a mix of all the classes, um, freshmen, sophomore, juniors, and seniors. Um, it'll be half the class that's being, that, that'll be there, and then the other half will be done remotely. Um, but we, um, uh, Mrs. White, as well as Mrs. Arnold, um, have done a, a, are doing a great job in terms of making sure that siblings are kept together so that they are in the same, um, same cohort um, and that, 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 that reduces the stress on the families in terms of making sure that one is at school and one isn't. Next question is, uh, how will discipleship take place? Sure, so right now all our retreats are on hold um, in terms of being able to not only um, make sure that it's safe to be able to, to congregate, but also finding those places uh, to make sure that happens. Um, Fran Ruth um, is, will, is coming back and she will be in charge of the discipleship uh, program for us. We have four slated um, on our calendar and we plan to do all four, uh, but they will be pushed back um, later on, um, hopefully sooner than later. Um, but we're looking then of sometime, maybe one in the fall and then, and, then, and then making sure that we have the three in the spring. The next question is, in the event that a student has a high temperature, and get sent home, what's the protocol for them returning to school? Sure, so the archdiocese as well as the Department of Catholic Schools have a protocol set in place that's dictated by public health and government um, regulations and guidelines. Um, we, we will have an infirmary set up at school, so if a student does come in, has a passes the temperature check, walks in and, and all of a sudden feels sick um, and will take the temperature, they will be, so we'll hold them um, and then we will um, notify the parents to pick up their student um, and then depending on what happens whether it's just because we're entering the flu season um, or if the student does test positive and uh, then there are protocols set in place that which we will initiate immediately um, and contact um, and we'll do, we do contact tracing it's very simple and then initiate that protocol to make sure that everyone that has um, been in contact with that student um, will be will be notified is there an option for continued online learning when schools are allowed to open? Yes, um, we understand that there are different um, stresses in the families and different needs as well too. Um, any family that opts to have their students stay home, even when we come back and in hybrid person, um, it was welcome to do so. Um, one of the things that we wanted to make sure is that um, making sure that we have cameras in the classroom so the students that do stay home um, will still have the same experience. And so they will, um, it'll be a live stream class. Um, classes will begin exactly at the same time. They're, they're expected to be part of that class as well. Um, and then they can still interact with their, um, with their teacher and with their, and with their fellow classmates um, via Zoom um, simultaneously. So it, it's not a problem. We are, we, we are anticipating that, that that will be a need for some families. Uh, this next question, I mean, these questions are kind of populating at the same time, so this is a little bit similar to the previous one. Is hybrid mandatory or can students continue to learning if desired? So students, uh, depending on the family issues and whatever the family needs, um, can remain in, um, in remote distance learning um, until the family feels that it's safe for them to return. 
Uh, this person says it will be helpful for the kids to have a video on how to take care of themselves as far as precautions when back to school. Sure, we'll make a note of that and I'll, um, we'll make sure that we'll, we'll pass that along. Mr. Sithi, if you can let me know, um, if you make a note of that. I make a note of myself, um, but then I'll, I'll, I'll make sure that that's also included. Yeah, uh, absolutely. We'll include that into our uh, first day of school, um, which is on August 12th. Um, and then we will, as part of our introduction then, um, we'll make sure that the, we'll, we'll have something ready uh, for our students to be able to know about that as well. So thank uh, you. Our next question is, can you clarify if the first day of school next Wednesday is virtual or in person? So classes will be all uh, virtual uh, until the mandatory lift order from the state um, is given. Um, we will be abiding by that um, order and then we will be remaining remote. Um, and until that order is lifted. Will students need to wear masks during sports conditioning? Um, again, that is up to, the, up to the coach. It becomes very difficult, especially wearing a mask and breathing heavily and then also running and expelling a lot of things. One of the things that they are very conscious about is making sure that they have that distance between them. Um, and wearing masks might be prohibitive and for them to be able to um, you know, be able to perform and do well. And um, we recognize that, but we also taking the, the coaches um, are taking the, um, uh, the protocols very seriously, making sure that they are um, six, at least six feet apart so that even if they don't have masks, um, they will still be able to, um, uh, still be able to participate. Next question is, um, will class sessions be recorded and available to view after the period is over? Uh, class sessions will, will not be recorded. Oh, well, I take that back. I, 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 so some classes will, mm, let me get back to you on that one because we have inter, uh, an international students um, that are with us. Um, and then although um, it'd be very mean for Bishop Alamany to make sure they get up at three o'clock in the morning uh, to be in their first period class, I think is unreasonable, um, but they're still part of our community. So um, and thinking about it, yes, all, those classes will be recorded. Um, whether they're, uh, if they'll be part of, to make sure that they ensure um, that continuity that we give to them. If there is a glitch on Canvas, and for example, on a quiz day, and a student is not able to take a quiz because the teacher is not able to reopen the quiz, which happens second semester of spring, how will this be handled, especially if student has studied for the quiz and hopes to bring a grade up? Sure. I mean, that's a perfectly good question. A lot of these questions, a lot that question goes directly to the teacher. Um, all of our teachers are um, aware of uh, certain glitches and certain uh, technical difficulties that might happen and that might arise as, as life happens. Um, simply communicate to your teacher and, and make that, um, and they will be more than willing to, to, to talk to you about making sure that a student makes up that quiz or makes up that test or makes up that activity. Um, so that they can still receive the credit that they that they deserve. Um, I, I don't know if as some of you know that even the APs um, this summer um, crashed. So my student, I might not my Joseph, my my senior uh, took an AP course, uh, was unable to submit, uh, much to mine and Kathleen's chagrin, um, and then he had to retake the test a week later. And so we understand that that glitches happened. Um, and so um, that is just simply a communication on, on your part with the teacher and make sure that, uh, uh, that their needs are met and that they will answer all the questions as much as we can. If a student experiences an internet outage, will it be considered an absence or will exceptions be made? Well, again, that's part of the communication. So one of the things that we're asking then is if you do have a, an internet failure or outage um, to contact uh, the teacher immediately or as soon as possible. And then one of those things is that if a student isn't there, then uh, they're, they're absent, uh, but it doesn't mean that they cannot um, get the information that, that was missed or be able to um, find that information in a way that the teacher can, can give that to them, um, either through an email or, or some other venue to be able to make that happen. But communication is key. So uh, we have uh, part of my um, communication with the department chairs um, and the teachers that I've spoken to and the faculty that, that I've spoken to is that idea of open communication with, with your students and with your families. Um, if there are problems that arise, then contact them directly and they will be more than happy to make any accommodations or um, to make sure that your students is, finds that help that they need. When will the kids be getting their class schedules? 
uh, you will be receiving your students' class schedules um, by, via email on August 9th. And then um, on, they will have the teacher's name and the courses that they've been, they've been they've requested or been given. Um, it will also give them the login information uh, for the first day of school um, for, um, uh, for, Tuesday, uh, for, for Wednesday. Um, in terms of when, when, how to log in as well too. Um, oh, I, I take that back. That'll be on, on, on Canvas. So once they get their information, they can go on Canvas and they can log in and they'll have the Zoom in information um, on how to access their, their first day, their classes on, on, on uh, to Wednesday, on their first day of school on that one. And then um, during that week, as, as if we were in live and in person, you'll also give them an opportunity then for you to talk to your counselor, your child's counselor, or your child talk to their counselor. Um, if a class is missing, if they were supposed to be taking a class and they, aren't, they weren't registered or they're given a class that they have no idea why they have that class, um, then arrangements can be made and talk to uh, their counselor um, or Mrs. White um, and make sure that those changes happen. In the event that a child has a high temperature in the morning and gets sent home, what's the protocol for them returning? Again, those, those protocols then have to take in place. Um, if they've tested positive, then, it, then we follow a certain track. But if it's a flu season and they just simply have the flu um, and they do not have COVID, then they, they stay home and, and, and they get better. Um, the policy has been all the, for, for Bishop Alamany is that a student cannot return to school if they have a um, cannot return to school until the, they've at least passed 24 hours since their fever broke. Um, and so we're asking for your help to make sure that that happens um, for the safety of our community and for our students, but also for the well-being of your student as well, too. Um, for Michaela S.Y., sorry if I'm butchering your name, I don't quite understand the question. If you could retype it at the chat, chat we'll uh, get back to it. Uh, the next question is, um, I know each student is responsible to bring their own masks, but if a student loses their mask, will the front office have extra to provide the student or should the school notify students to bring extra masks? Uh, a little bit of both. I think that's just being precautious of your students and knowing who your students are. I know my kid would lose it before he gets in second period. I mean, that's just, that's just my kid. <laughs> um, but, the faculty, but, the, but the front office will have masks available. Um, if a student is there and they just, you know, inadvertently because of, being kids, they forgot their mask, but their but their temperature check is clear. Simply go to the front office, and they'll they will receive a mask. How will you ensure that the six feet distance during passing periods? Um, so part of that will be um, supervision from all our teachers, um, and then we also will make sure not make sure we also have um, designated the hallways to be one way hallways, and so students will be going one way. So if they have a class next door, they have to go all the way around in order to get to that class next door. Um, and so that's one way that we're doing. Plus the hallways are going to be monitored by teachers. Supervision will be outside with the deans as well as extra staff. Um, and so we will make sure that they do not congregate um, and make sure that they still have six feet, uh, make sure that social distancing still occurs um, during the transition period. Can you clarify the dress code? Are the students to be in uniform for distance learning? Yes, I apologize. So they will be um, either in a uh, Bishop Alamany polo shirt or in a uh, Bishop Alamany uh, sweatshirt, um, whichever they're most comfortable with. Um, during mass times, they just they do not need to wear their mask. They may, I mean, they could. If they want to wear their mask uniforms, they certainly are welcome to. But the very minimum is that they must wear their Bishop Alamany polo shirt. What if the student is asymptomatic? then they are, I don't understand the question. Um, so uh, Michaela S. Wagon, if you want to um, add a little bit more information, we can circle back. Uh, okay. and answer that question. Um, the next question then is, so the student with the high temperature has to get tested before they return? Um, yes, so that'd be part of the protocols that's already initiated in place. They get tested, whether it's a, whether they, if they test positive, then they test positive and that, that triggers um, certain protocol, but if they test, but if they just have a five high fever because of a flu, then the regular precautions that you would normally take because of a flu, um, stay in bed and all those things, make sure that the fever broke at least 24 hours prior before they, before they come back to school. A note will be required. Uh, how will the school make sure to help students with learning challenges that struggle with virtual learning? Sure. So I've spoken to uh, Ms. Chauvin. Um, she and I had a really good conversation. She is our counselor 
that is in charge of students with learning challenges um, and learning needs. Um, if you, so she is, as a counselor, keeps track of that um, and also helps with our teachers as well too. But I think what's, what's important then for, for you um, um, as a parent is to, and also for the student is to help them advocate for their needs um, in the classroom with their teachers. Um, let them know that um, there are things that they need in order to be successful. Um, and some of those are just best practices to make that happen. Um, and then our teachers, again, are, are very willing uh, to make sure that our students not only su be successful, but they also thrive in this new environment. Uh, there's a question about this uh, session being recorded. Uh, yes, it is being recorded and it's, will, it will be on our YouTube and be posted on our school website uh, tomorrow afternoon. Uh, the next question um, is about student masks. If they lose a mask, will they have extras? I believe you answered it, but do you want to answer it again? Sure. Um, a student, if a student loses their mask on campus and they came on board, uh, the front office will have extra, extra mask for them to be able to have. If we elect to have our student continue distance learning, who do we notify at Alamania that the student will be remaining remote? Will there be a formal process in place for this type of communication? Yes, so contact um, uh, Mrs. Arnold, um, and then she will make the notations and necessary um, accommodations in terms of the scheduling. So when we do come in, in person, that she, that person, that your student will not be marked um, as, as part of the, uh, the cohort that comes in a class. Can a student participate in athletics and still participate in distance learning? Yes. Will teachers be using a smart board during virtual learning? When students come back to campus during hybrid, how will the school organize to check in all students before beginning school? Sure, so we will have two entry points for our students coming in. Um, and actually two entry points for everyone coming in. Um, it'll either be at um, Alamany Hall or at Alumni Hall or at um, the gym. Um, all temperatures will be checked. They'll be pre-screened and they'll ask them, um, do you have any symptoms? Do you feel, do you feel well? Um, and once, they, once they're fine, temperature check is good, they'll be given a bracelet or a wristband with a certain color for that day. Um, and then they will they'll be, able to go to, be able to go to school. Uh, the first part of the question about the virtual, um, I'm sorry, about the smart boards. Uh, Zoom essentially is a smart board um, for virtual uh, online distance learning. So most of the tools available with, with what they would have with a white a smart board in the classroom, uh, Zoom actually, Zoom and Canvas together um, can do most of those things. Um, the next question is, um, if a child went home sick, will they be required a doctor's clearance upon returning to school? Yes. Uh, are we accepting international exchange students? Yes. Uh, how will lunch be handled? Um, uh, very well. I, I buzzed out. I apologize. Um, we are making uh, the accommodations in our classroom or in the outside eating spaces. Um, so the picnic tables or the, the lunch tables are being separated. Um, and there are, there will be only three uh, students allowed in each of the benches or the, the tables. There are going to be clearly marked and clearly designated. Um, the cafeteria will have, um, uh, a clear entrance and a clear exit. Um, and then they will be, um, just like in the stores now, they'll have six feet uh, hash marks. And so kids will be waiting in line six feet apart. How early will you start checking temperature in order to start on time? Sure, so um, we will, for the school that comes in at, um, for 8.30, um, students will, will can come in as early as seven o'clock. If a child tests positive, will you notify all the students that they were in contact with? Yes. Yes, we will notify you and that, that triggers a certain protocol uh, that we um, will abide by that's given to us not only from the archdiocese and Catholic schools, but also mandates from county health and government officials. How do you make sure kids know how to use Zoom? Mr. Sithi, that, that'd be your first one. <laughs> <laughs> sure thing. Um, well, when um, the day of orientation, um, well, let me, let me take a step back actually, because these are, these are juniors. Um, they will have access to their Canvas courses and within Canvas, there will be a link to the Zoom meeting um, and they can click on it. Uh, if they have any issues, normally with Zoom, when you click on the link, it will either automatically open the app or prompt you to install the app. Uh, once they're in, uh, the teacher will be there to answer any questions. 
um, if they do have any additional questions for anything, um, I think it'd be, I mean, okay for them to join uh, the freshman orientation because the freshman or freshman new student orientation, we are going to be covering um, how to join Zoom, and the links for that will be on the website uh, prior to the freshman or freshman and new student orientation. So if anyone uh, would like a refresher or just learn how to use Zoom, um, that option will be available during the freshman and new student orientation. And again, the links for that will be on the website um, the day of the, the orientation. Uh, the next question is, will parents be able to have Zoom meetings with teachers where you see your child has challenges, especially if they do have learning challenges because only a parent can really explain their child's challenges best to the teachers? I mean, I, as parents, we are advocates for our children. Um, 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 we're the best advocates for our children. Um, and as uh, educators, we welcome that communication and that collaboration. Um, and if you will, you are the best to be able to articulate that um, to our teachers, then, then the better. And of course, they, they, they will are happy to do that to make sure that all their students succeed. How will the students fulfill their service hours? Will the school provide options? Sure. So regarding service hours, um, regarding parent service hours, and regarding fundraiser, uh, fundraising requirements, those will be prorated um, uh, depending on when we, when we come back to school. Um, so if we come back to school, then the remaining months will be prorated relative to what we've missed. And then we will, uh, we will send out those numbers in terms of the parent obligations, the, um, the service requirements for students, as well as the fundraising. Um, uh, responsibilities for the families as well. Uh, this is similar to previous, a previous question. Um, how early in the morning will the temperature check start? So we'll, we'll cause uh, we have, uh, uh, we have a zero period which will be starting uh, in a couple of weeks and some students will be participating in that. So uh, the campus will be open at seven o'clock um, to, to uh, make sure that students are coming in. Um, to, we'll do the temperature checks both at alumni hall and at the gym. How, um, I'm sorry, will fans be allowed for sports events or will there be an option for live streaming games? That one, I guess, we, we're, we're still waiting for a lot of directives and a lot of initiatives from, from CIF. Um, it is the hope of uh, Bishop Alamany administration, um, as well as the students and as well as faculty that we uh, have some sense of normalcy and part of that normalcy is being able to provide athletic uh, venues and events for our students and for our families. Um, but given that, um, we are restricted by the guidelines that are, that are imposed to us by county health and also by CIF. Um, so part of that conversation then is, um, although we have seasons already in place and then we have, I've signed contracts in terms of games that are going to be happening and I know when the games are, the schedules are, um, we really are, as you know, it's, it's a moving target. Things change and things fluctuate. Um, it is our hope that we go back to normal as soon as possible. It is our hope that we can have fans in, the, in, in, in our stands while, we, while our kids play. It is our hope that um, all of us can come back together and, and be able to experience all sports and athletics events uh, together. Um, but we still are limited by uh, the directives from county health and from government officials. Whether it be live stream, that, that's something else that, that I will be talking to Mr. Erbach about that maybe um, we will have an answer for you by, um, by the August 12th uh, meeting that we would have at a Zoom call, uh, parent Zoom call regarding athletics. There are a lot of good questions and I'm sure there were more in other sessions. Is there a frequently asked questions and answer page on the website? Um, I, can, I can answer this. Sure. Um, so uh, thank you for asking and uh, you're definitely right. There are a lot of good questions and um, I think that would be a really great addition to a website. Um, let me share the screen, my screen uh, very quickly. So on the school website under About Us, there's a distance and in-person hybrid learning updates section. So again, from the main site, it's just under About Us and it's the second option here. And we do keep um, some updates here, but I do believe having a frequently asked questions or a, a, something like a resource with some of the information that we gain from these town hall meetings, I think that'd be a good idea. So it's definitely something I'd like to work on with administration. So uh, keep an eye out on this page and um, you know, hopefully we'll have something up relatively soon. Um, our next question is, will there, will there be environmental service people frequently sanitizing high traffic areas like benches, lunch tables, et cetera? Um, we will have um, the, our normal crew do the uh, maintenance in terms of cleaning. Um, and then they are, 
they're outfitted. We have we have bought misters for all our classrooms. Um, we have gotten extra supplies, all the PP. Uh, P supplies as well too, uh, PPE supplies as well. Um, we are going to do our best to make sure that our school is safe and ready for our students to come back when they do come back. Will clubs be allowed to meet once school reopens? Yes, so on September 23rd, um, that's a Wednesday, um, they will, it'll be club day. Um, and then um, teachers or, or the moderators and they will be um, inviting students to join their clubs. Um, and clubs will be able to meet um, remotely. Um, and then they will, will still offer the same um, gamut of clubs um, and activities for our students as much as possible. Um, and then uh, we'll try to make it as, as for the new normal, uh, at least be able to make clubs happen the way that adjusting it to, to the new parameters that we have. Is the administration monitoring the teachers to ensure that they are adhering to the one hour class requirements? Yes. When do you think fall indoor sports teams will be allowed to practice indoors? Again, that is a public health question. And so um, Dr. Ferrer will give us the, the AOK -okay when that happens. Um, but I, I really have no um, CIF and, and myself and Mission League um, would like to make it happen as soon as possible. But uh, given the circumstances and how things are fluid, um, I, I couldn't give you a date or even estimate a time when that's going to happen. We hopefully. I know Bishop Almany has only a certain amount of days a student can be missing. If a student is out more than the days allowed due to being sick from COVID, how will school accommodate those students that have missed so many days and the virtual classes? Sure. So then again, that, that falls into a certain uh, different guidelines in terms of, uh, of, of um, uh, days missed. Um, that again is a part of the communication that we would have with the students and also um, communication with, with their teachers. Um, it is our hope that, that you know, the students are still be able to come in and that we are immune, our community is immune from this, but, but to be realistic, we, we, um, life happens. Um, and then if it does, and then we will make accommodations to make sure the student um, receives a full credit as much as they can. We will work with that family and that student uh, to make sure that they are, will receive as much the, the credit that they deserve, um, given the circumstances of, of having COVID. Uh, I think we're okay on time. Just a heads up, it is 6.52. Um, our next question is, do you have an estimate date as to when we will go back to school? Um, I don't. Um, again, the, the situation is very fluid. Um, uh, on Monday, um, Dr. Ferrer just said that our numbers were very good and she was very optimistic as to what that looks like. Um, as soon as we pass that, that benchmark of 14 days of of, uh, of what, what's been set, set for us by, by, the, by the state uh, for each of our counties, and then we will open immediately. Um, we are already, uh, our campus is being uh, reorganized and refashioned right now as we speak. So if it happens, then we can open, uh, we can open within a week, or we can open immediately. Will there still be after school clubs such as Warrior Weekly, et cetera? Um, again, that really is dependent upon uh, the social distancing um, what we can do. Um, we have a lot of outdoor space, and so we have uh, 56 acres. We have two campuses, the athletic fields across the street, and we have a, a, a expansive campus down um, in, in the lower field. Um, so it really is up to the, uh, the moderator uh, to make sure that whatever they feel comfortable with their clubs and with their students and what they want to do. Um, I'm certainly open to it. The band... Uh, had a band day um, over um, over the summer and distancing. Um, the, the, as you know, some of our athletic teams have been practicing um, even uh, prior to the shutdown, um, and so they were keeping in pods and and making sure that social distancing has happened. Yeah, I'm, I'm very much open to to those activities happening. It adds a sense of normalcy to our students and to our community, um, but it also will help our students with their mental health and being seeing each other as well. So yeah, I'm very much for it. Will teachers be tested um, by the return of in-classroom teaching? How often will they be tested, if at all? Sure. So testing is like, uh, in my understanding, testing is, 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 like, um, is like your checkbook. Um, you know, when you look at it, that one point, and that's what it is. Um, but after that testing, you, you might be infected. You might, uh, you might get something immediately afterwards. So there is no mandate from the archdiocese, from DCS, um, or even from state uh, that our teachers be tested. Uh, they will be adhering to their own um, screening. So if they do not feel well, if they feel ill, if they feel those symptoms, then they will stay home and they will let us know what goes on. It will trigger 
again, a certain response. If it's the flu, then it's the flu, and that triggers one set of response. But if it triggers that they have, if they if they test, if they test test positive, then that triggers a different set of responses and um, guidelines that we will we will follow to ensure the safety of our of our students in our community. How will dance practices uh, be taking place? Um, dance might most likely be outside. Um, there will not be any indoor. Um, if they do, there will not be any indoor uh, practices. Um, and so the, with social distancing, um, dancing will be with uh, Mrs. Bonilla is our new, new dance uh, instructor and coach. Um, and she'll be happy to answer that or uh, directed directly or questions will be directly about athletics and sports um, to Mr. Erbach. Um, and then he'll be able to answer that and uh, join us in our apparent Zoom meeting on August 12th at six o'clock. And we hope to answer all those questions as well. Will students be able to use the restrooms while on campus? Yes, that'd be cruel and unusual punishment if we don't. <laughs> yeah, yes, they will be able to use the restrooms. Um, again, with social distancing, they'll be one at a time. Um, again, it's, it's, it's a coordination then since then we have uh, so many classrooms using the, using the restroom. Um, there'll be a coordination and that'll be part of logistics that we are, we are working on and making sure that that happens. But yes, they will be allowed to use restrooms. Uh, after the first initial temperature check, will there be a secondary temperature check? There is always the issue of Tylenol being taken. Uh, no, there will not be an, there will not be a second uh, secondary uh, temperature check. Uh, there's two questions about Canvas. I'm going to kind of bundle them together. Uh, will yeah. parents still be getting grades updates through Canvas? And the parent Canvas does not seem to always be in sync with the student Canvas. Just wondering if the virtual handshake between these two will be made. Thanks. Um, so regarding getting their grades, um, as soon as a teacher updates a grade, it's in Canvas, it automatically pushes. So it's like if I were to give, or sorry, if I were to enter a grade for a kid to get a five out of five, as soon as I do it, like maybe three seconds later, they it appears on their Canvas. Um, so Canvas is arguably the best place to be updated with grades um, to see how they're doing. You can also ask um, your students to check out their Canvas. Uh, this next, the other question about the, the handshake. Um, thank you for the information about that. Um, if you want the best version, like the most up-to-date Canvas information, um, you can try refreshing um, in the app, but I would also recommend opening Canvas on a computer browser because that loads a brand new version of it every single time. So if there's an issue or you think that there's something happening, um, just load the, the desktop version of it on a browser and that should like load a new version of it. I'll look into this though um, and see what's going on. Um, about a delay uh, regarding updates. Uh, the next question, sorry, go ahead. Well, no, I'll just, if I can chime in on that one, uh, Mr. Sethi, that uh, in terms of Canvas and posting, um, it'll be uniform across the board. So all the teachers, all the faculty members will post on Canvas um, their agendas. So teachers, so parents will only have to look in one place. Um, we will, it will only go, go, go through Canvas. Uh, is back to school night to meet the teachers being done on Zoom? Yes, it will be done on Zoom and then we will, um, that agenda will be pushed out. Uh, most likely it will be a welcome from Dr. Hamilton and myself. But the bulk of those, the, the back to school night will be opportunities for you to be able to, to meet with your teachers, um, similar to what the schedules that they are, will be going through. So um, every 10, 15 minutes, um, you'll get a link and go to your teachers, go to your students next class. And it will follow the same uh, same schedule um, to the best of our ability. God forbid, if a teacher is infected, do you have a backup sub teacher to take over that teacher's classroom? Yes. So, uh, like um, the uh, the remote distance and the in hybrid and in person class environment, we want to make it as seamless as possible. Um, so it really is important. So if a teacher is absent, then another teacher will be there uh, to cover the class. Will temperatures be taken every day at school? Uh, yes. So anyone entering campus will be, uh, temperature checks will be taken, masks will be required, um, and they'll be screened. And if they meet the temperature check and the screening, uh, they'll be given a wristband for the students uh, to be able to go on, and then those, and then they'll be able to come on campus, um, and then they're, they're, they're good to go. All visitors on campus will also be temperature checked as well, and masks will be required of all visitors coming on campus too. With all these restrictions, wouldn't it be safer to continue remote learning? Um, it's, we're trying the best we can in terms of precautions that we're trying to take, um, but it is our view um, that students function better um, when they are together. 
um, and function best, the school functions best when they are with each other and we are with our students. Um, we understand the precautions and we understand um, the needs to be able to make sure that our students and safe and faculty are safe. We are taking every precaution to make sure that it happens. Um, and then if families feel the need to be able to, that they want their students to stay home, then, then because of, of whatever circumstances that may be, they're more than welcome to. Um, but we will proceed forward. Um, as, soon as, as soon as the mandate uh, is lifted, um, we will be able to, we, we will start school. I can't believe it, but the timing worked out. We're at seven o'clock, and that was the last question. If anyone has a question that we didn't get to, please feel free to type it in, in, in the chat um, now, and we'll get to it immediately. No, put up the next slide. We're going. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Great. Thank you again. So I just wanted to, again, uh, talk to you about the upcoming events. So for our new families, um, the new student orientation day will be on August 11th. The first day of school is August 12th. Both days are our minimum days. Um, the schedule for your students will be pushed out to you on uh, Sunday uh, via email. Um, and then you will have uh, the classes as well as the counselor that's, that's uh, assigned to your student as well as all the teachers. Um, and then once you have that, then you can log on Canvas and, and, and get all the log information for the first day of school. The new families, the information light will be on August 12th at 6 p.m. The Athletic Department Parent Zoom call is on August 13th, the next following day at 6 p.m. Back to school night is August 19th. And then counseling nights for your students and seniors um, will be on August 25th at 6.30. And all of this will be done via Zoom. Again, I want to thank you on behalf of Dr. Hamilton and myself. Um, we want to thank you again for choosing Bishop Alamany. Um, we recognize that there are choices that you have. Um, and then we also recognize the sacrifices that our parents make in order for you to provide a, a, an ed Catholic education for your students. Um, we, are going to, we are doing our best uh, to make sure that our students are safe, our community is safe, in light of this new normal. And that we are hoping then to be able to provide as much structure and as much um, uh, accountability and, and stability, um, both for your students and for your uh, families, uh, as well as for our teachers and faculty to ensure success both on our side. So we want to thank you again you are in our prayers uh, for your safety and for your families. Um, and please keep us in your prayers as we begin school and as we make plans to be opening school very soon. So thank you again, everyone, and we hope to see you very soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.